I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, um, Mr. Murgesh, who is a Google certified educator with a master's degree in computer science and master's in higher education from both the university in Botswana. He comes with over 20, 20 years of training experience in information technology. Murgesh's expertise lies in training professionals in Java, .NET, SQL Server, Oracle, and more. He's also skilled in all phases of software development lifecycle and is an expert in translating <laughs> business requirements into technical solutions. Now, without any further delay, I'd like to hand the session over to Murgesh. Uh, thank you, Shushil, uh, for the nice introduction. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, you all can see my screen, uh, today's session will be on plan design and build your own website from scratch okay and uh, um, i'm going to uh, give you some tips on how to design what are the technologies what are the programming languages you should know what is the architecture and those details i will be briefing you in this uh, session I hope um, uh, I will satisfy all your uh, needs and uh, let me again thank you for attending this uh, session. Okay, yeah, let us start quickly. Agenda for today will be these five topics. Object oriented programming language, RDBMS, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, XML, web architecture and some uh, 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 to some extent components okay like yeah so this will be the agenda for today object oriented programming language concepts will be the first uh, topic in this session um what is object oriented programming language and what is the what are the concepts uh, that is the most important um, thing in this um, uh, the whole of uh, the session okay and this is a prerequisite for knowing how to design your website okay yeah uh, see what is object anybody can you tell me what is object what is an object okay uh, now an object is something that you see on your naked eyes okay you see something in your naked eyes. Whatever you see in your naked eyes are all, all objects. Okay, um, and and um, what we see, see uh, when you when we go on the road, like uh, like in the road. Okay, uh, uh, we see uh, many many things. Or even when you are sitting in the uh, in your home, you see a lot of things in your home. Okay, whatever you see are objects and what is the tradition like um, the the classical definition for object is uh, it is an uh, ins um, what is a, a traditional um, uh, definition for a class is an, a class is an instance of an object okay so if you want to create a class first thing is if you want to create an object the first thing is you have to create a class okay I'm sorry for that you want to create an object the first thing is you have to create a class okay and a class um, object uh, so you are able to um, differentiate between a class and object so first you have to create a class and then you will create objects for that particular class okay now let me give you a, a, a very nice example for that you create a class for student as we all know in a class of uh, uh, like any class any uh, the, that class is different from this class because the class which i'm giving you an example is um, the day-to-day -day classes that we are attending okay right now you are attending this class uh, and this class will have number of attendees okay and all these uh, you the attendees you attendees are all let me uh, uh, say you are all each one are a unique object unique okay because why unique because each one of you will have your own name you 
have your own characteristics you have your own things okay okay you're all unique okay so we create a class okay one single class and we create number of objects an array of objects okay we create an array of, array of objects okay because a class will have number of uh, none of the class will have one or single object okay if you go in a road you see a car and that car uh, you won't see one single car you will see thousands of cars going uh, left to right okay uh, so each one are unique okay each one is unique each one will be uh, from a, a company called as uh, like maruti uh, uh, toyota hyundai etc etc okay and each one will have their own colors their own uh, uh, capacity their own uh, uh, sitting capacity or whatever it is okay so are you able to get me class and object so you create a class and what a class will have two things in common very very important two things in common um one is the data member the other one is a method data member what is a data member what is a data member in object oriented programming more importance is given to data okay data okay in object oriented programming more importance more uh, importance is given to data okay rather uh, in, uh, before object oriented programming we had uh, procedural programming like c is procedural structured programming language structured program it's not an object oriented programming whereas c++ is object oriented programming language which is a superset of c okay superset of c is c++ okay in c++ whatever you can do in c you can do it in c++ apart from it you that is uh, object oriented programming because in c you cannot create class but in c++ you can create class object i do what are all the all the concepts you can implement all the concepts of object oriented programming so the object oriented programming concepts are are uh, are there listed in the screen you can see that class object encapsulation polymorphism inheritance abstraction message passing so these are the most important concepts when you come to uh, object oriented o p l or o p o oops or whatever you you name it okay um yeah, yeah. so is this clear to you okay what is encapsulation what do you mean by encapsulation see uh, we all see when we go to a medical shop we buy capsules right what is there in capsules there is some medicines which is enclosed in a wrapper okay so the same thing encapsulation means it's very very simple you create a class encapsulating the data and the methods together into one single unit and you give it a name that is encapsulation okay and that is encapsulation writing and creating a class is encapsulation okay is that clear it's very simple concept encapsulation means when you create a class you are encapsulating the data members and methods into one single unit and you give it a name you create a class for uh, anything see class is something like uh, you create something in general okay general okay general student is generic okay employee is generic what else is generic vehicle is generic okay because you have lot of lot of different categories of vehicles we have car we have truck we have cycle we have motorcycle we have plenty of uh, different types of vehicles but uh, when you create a class ensure that you create a generic thing so that when you create object you can create object for a car you can create an object for cycle you can create an object for ship okay you name it okay is that clear 
okay uh, let me proceed uh, I, I hope encapsulation is clear for you guys and uh, polymorphism what is polymorphism means poly mean, poly means it's a greek term poly means many okay poly means many morphism means forms okay uh, one, uh, a method taking more than one form okay a same method taking more than one form the method is you create a method in a, inside a class okay and that method will be taking more than one different form what do you mean by one different form? What do you mean by one different form? See, yeah, you know, you you see, um, uh, a method is something like I create a object. Sorry, I create a class for a student. Okay, that is a traditional, classical example. Student is classical example. Student. Uh, what will be the method? Okay, a method for a student can be result. Okay, every student, every student will be very much interested to know their result. Okay, to know their result, they will be very much interested. They should, they have to see their marks and know whether they have passed or failed or they got a distinction. What whatever it is. Okay, so result depends upon their marks obtained marks of obtained marks and um, for that you can have a method called as uh, get results get results okay and then get results you can have overloaded methods what is overloading method overloading means what okay uh, a method overloading is something like and a method overloading is something like creating more than one form of the same method which is different in number of parameters and the type of like number of parameters means how many parameters you are passing to this method that is number of parameters type of parameters means what is the data type uh, given for those para parameters that is the type of parameters so there are two units in this um, uh, polymorphism. One is the uh, uh, number of parameters. The other one is the type of parameters. You can have overloaded methods like two parameters method for a get results method, uh, like integer float, two parameters, integer m1, integer m2, something like that. Float m1, float m2, or else float m1 string name something like that okay you can have something like those these are all overloaded methods okay i hope polymorphism is clear and for there are two very good examples of polymorphism that is method overloading and other one is method overriding okay when i talk about method overloading you also have to uh, uh, address something called called as constructor overloading. Okay, what is constructor overloading? Constructor is there is there are uh, something called as what is a constructor? In a class, you create a constructor. Okay. Um, if you are not creating a constructor, nothing wrong. The environment will create a constructor and it will take a responsibility of initializing the data members that are declared inside the class okay so constructors the main duty of constructor is when you create an object okay when you say uh, student obj1 equal to new obj open and close parameters sorry parenthesis then the object is will be created the object is the one which is taking the memory class doesn't take any memory okay class doesn't take any memory only objects will take memory okay are you getting me because once you create an object you will store data in it okay say i create an object for student okay as you all know there are there will be plenty of students okay millions of students okay so um, these million students data has to be stored in somewhere 
it, it has to be stored the data has to be stored okay so data you store it in object and object will take memory okay and this memory will be holding until the program will is running okay once the program is exited okay exited these data will be lost okay once the program exited means that no, there will be no data saved in the memory okay it will all vanish okay one question here if you want to store the data permanently what you have to do okay if you want to do uh, store the data permanently you have to put it in the database okay uh, once you uh, you uh, you take all these data the million data or a uh, thousand data okay thousand data you will be storing it in an array okay and before you close the program from array you have to transfer everything to the database so that it will be persistent okay it will be persistent i hope you all know what is persistent persistent means storing the things data permanently in the database okay that is persistence next slide is rtbms okay and uh, this is all about uh, this uh, um, what is what i was talking like uh, they are storing the data and uh, we will create methods and we will write programs we will write lines of code to implement these things okay i will address everything in your in the next session uh, and then we will uh, jump into the next uh, concept that is inheritance inheritance is it's a uh, inherit we all inherit from our parents right we inherit from our parents grandparents okay we inherit uh, our like our color our hair and uh, our eyes everything like there is resemblance from our parents it is all coming from the dna and uh, stuff like that okay um so inheritance see real world programming object oriented programming is a real world programming okay so like what i said earlier and i'm repeating it what you see in your naked eyes is all object okay so they want to um, uh, they wanted to um, uh, like uh, grab that thing and put it into programming and that is why object oriented programming came okay so inheritance you have uh, you inherit from your grandparents so inheritance there are plenty of um, types of inheritance single inheritance multiple inheritance multi level inheritance okay hybrid inheritance there are plenty of inheritance if you refer websites uh, you will get all these types see basically uh, let me just uh, put some light on inheritance you create a class and you create another class and uh, the first class is called a super class or parent class the second class is called as child class or uh, sub class okay so sub what does the sub class do is like it inherits all the properties of the parent class here is what the uh, what is that mm -hmm private public uh, protected access specifiers comes in okay so when when the methods and the data members are public you inherit everything in your subclass if it is private if it is private okay then it won't be visible in the subclass okay am i clear to you shushil yes yes yes, yes okay fine so inheritance i have just explained you a single inheritance more about inheritance uh, i won't be able to complete it if i talk about uh, these things like yeah i will jump into abstraction abstraction is nothing but you you it's all uh, these are all object oriented concepts abstraction see we when you create when you do a project what you do you create an abstract the first thing is when you open your project you will have something called as abstract abstract is nothing but a summary okay a summary okay summary that is abstraction okay and uh, you leave out all the unwanted things and you put only the needed things that is abstraction okay 
and message passing is communication between one method to another method that is message passing let me quickly move into the next uh, slide next slide is our, how to clear the screen yeah rdbms uh, like relational database management system uh, database design concepts you have uh, the two important concepts are <coughs> er diagram and normalization entity relationship diagram entity is something like like uh, what is database i defined the what is database it is persistent storage of data when you put some data into your database it will be permanently stored okay the data will be permanently stored okay uh, yeah and anytime you can retrieve the data from the database and you can modify it and again store them back to the database okay so in designing a database the first thing is you have to create tables okay i hope you all know what is a table what is a table it's it's a it's a combination of rows and columns and uh, rows are all called as records columns are called as fields okay and uh, yeah very good very good social yeah and then uh, when you relate one table to another table it is it is er diagram and this type of relationship can be uh, like it's it's one to one one to many many to many these are the three type of relationship okay uh, one table can be related to another table for a, for an instance one teacher can teach to one student one teacher can teach to many students okay many students can listen to many lectures from many other teachers okay these are all the possible cases okay so when you think about that you can easily model it in a database uh, and this is the first um, uh, way of designing the database and like you have to create a er diagram in any project uh, you will do this or sometimes you will create a schema diagram uh, and in designing these diagrams the very very important thing is normalization and you have um, uh, uh, first normal form second normal form third normal form and voice code normal form okay so these are the types of normalization and uh, the first normal form what is the first normal form removing the redundancy in the database okay that is uh, you refer it uh, we won't i if i start explaining that i won't be completing it on time so uh, normalization is a very in-depth concept uh, it's uh, it's a i can teach normalization for uh, one hour okay uh, but i don't want to do that I'm, uh, then i won't be completing it okay so uh, very very important thing is uh, before rdbms you had dbms and examples of rdbms is um, all the databases like whatever the database that you see now like uh, oracle and um, ms sql server mysql mongodb these are all uh, examples of databases all right a client a server a business layer and the data layer okay these are the four layers okay we had earlier we had the first um, uh, um, version was two tier architecture three tier architecture now it is four tier architecture okay this is four tier four tier means four layers okay four layers okay uh, and in this diagram you can easily identify some things uh, like there is a client who is a client when i use my mobile phone okay when i use my mobile phone i'm a client okay when i use my uh, browser i'm a client when i use any other application it's a client okay what we do when we have an internet we access the server what we do when i say www.google.com the request is sent to the web server and that this page okay the web page the google uh, page will be loaded into your browser 
So all these uh, client machines, devices will be using a one single tool and that tool will be the browser. Get me? Are you getting me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. And then what is this web server? Web server, for instance, in .NET, Microsoft.NET, we have a web server called as IIS. IIS stands for Internet Information Server. We store all our um, um, server-side pages in IIS. What is a client? A client is something which doesn't, which can understand only HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Okay, it cannot understand anything else. It can understand HTML. Okay, HTML, what you all know what is HTML? HTML is, uh, is um, HTML is used for creating a web page. Okay. When you want to create a web page, no other go, you have to use only HTML. Okay. And then, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is very, very powerful, okay? Because using JavaScript, nowadays you can create Angular. You, you are, I hope you all know what is Angular. Angular is a technology which is used to create powerful user interfaces. In fact, Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook, everything is created using Angular. Okay, and Angular is from Google again. Okay, it is from Google. Okay, and uh, it is used for creating user interface alone. Okay, um, it's a framework. Angular is a framework which is used to create. And um, the how to create, how to write a code in Angular. You create, you create your code using TypeScript, and TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Okay, and JavaScript is used for client-side validation. Okay, what is client-side validation? Client-side validation mean, means um, you validate the data that is entered in the by the user in a screen. For example, if you create a registration screen, we all know. In a registration screen, okay, you will have say for instance sign up screen. Sign up screen. What are the data which will be requested? You will have a name, first name, last name, and the age, date of birth, etc., etc. Okay, you will have a lot of details to be entered, and these details will be validated on the client, on the browser. Okay in the browser in the browser using javascript okay because client can understand javascript why we are not validating using server side means because to make our application faster okay we use javascript because each client um, will be using a browser and browser is enabled to um, compile uh, and run javascript code okay so to make it simple, I have just shut uh, shut shut for, uh, shut, uh, cut short some things, and uh, yeah, that is all about uh, client and server. What is business layer? See, sir, there are some critical applications like uh, banking applications, finance applications, where uh, something is very very important. We all know banking uh, applications are very very critical because money it is it is all involving money okay when you uh, want to transfer some money uh, from your account to your college or your friend account what do we do we initiate initiate a transaction okay we initiate a transaction and we transfer the money what is done in the background means uh, each see there is something called as asset property asset what is asset atomicity consistency integrity durability okay that is asset okay atomicity consistency integrity and durability okay see these transactions will have only two states one is success the other one is failure there is no intermediate state because when you transfer a money from your account to your friend's account or your uh, father mother account or your wife account or whatever it is okay it should go uh, money from uh, money from your account should be debited 
and money should be credited in to your wife account okay okay the transaction should be successful or failure there is no intermediate state okay that is application server and that you write it using the business logic that is called as business logic you write it here using com decom or the in in uh, uh, latest uh, like uh, nowadays in full stack there are technologies for that okay, i don't want to mention any names because i will be confused to you let me make it simple okay and earlier in microsoft you had something called as com decom and in java you have ejb 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 stands for enterprise java beans and uh, in uh, microsoft you had decom Decom stands for distributed component object model. <clears throat> okay, and at last is the database. Okay, database you store the data permanently in the database. Once the transaction completes, everything is taken to the database. Okay, and it is stored so that you can retrieve the data anytime. Okay, so you will write server side script, ASP script, or JSP script, or PHP script to retrieve the data from your database okay i hope this architecture and uh, node.js is 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 um, uh, node uh, is the latest uh, topic in full stack uh, uh, in dot net full stack you will write application logic using node.js okay or else if you want you can even write it using asp.net okay but Node.js is more advanced and uh, powerful. Okay, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, let me give you the link. If you could just drop it in the chat box, the audience will. Yeah, yeah I'm doing it right now. Yeah, this is my YouTube channel. Um, the the one who is presenting is me. Okay, the one who is presenting is me myself. Um, and my uh, YouTube channel, the name is VM's IT Educational Hub. Okay. And if you have any questions, post it to my email ID, Burgesh Sandport at email.com. Okay. Excellent. And uh, yeah, here is references. And thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Good night.